Hello everyone, back guys here and welcome back to another video with another review. How's it going? Everything okay? Good to have a good great day of Davis' smiling face, so we smile a bit and keep continuing. In this video, we are going to have an unboxing, testing, focusing, zooming, all in all depth viewing the Nikon AFS 24-220mm GED VR in series lens. Ooh, what a name! I think we better call it Nikon 24-220mm f4 nano lens. Yeah, let's open the box and see what do we have inside. These are the stuff which they were inside the box. Nikon CL1218 soft fabric material carry case. Well, if you need any, just tell me, I have plenty of them. Nikon HB53 plastic lens hood. Very, very useful thing. I will tell you why. And the last but not least is the gorgeous lens itself. Ha, huh, isn't it beautiful? <sighs> In a first look, the lens is so nice and handy and it's made of plastic on the outside of the lens. Hmm, I like it. But just a bit heavy, that's because of the big glass in the lens. And the lens is about 710 grams. In front of the lens we have 77mm cap, so we can use any kind of 77mm filters such as UV, Polarize or ND. At the back of the lens we have a metal mount, mm, my favorite one, much better than plastic mount. Around the metal mount we have a robbery or plastic or we can call it dust gasket for giving a dust protection when camera and lens are attached. The lens has 9 aperture blades, included 17 elements in 13 groups. What are you doing? Hmm, just give me a second. Huh? But I'm still recording, should I stop it? Oh, cut. Wait, is that a lens or air pumper? What? What are you talking about? Air pumper? Yeah, air pumper. When I'm zooming in and out, the air pumping out of the lens, especially when I'm doing it quickly. No way. You're kidding. Oh, never mind. Let's get back to the review. On top of the lens we have a focus distance scale window. Under the scale window we have the internal focusing ring which covered this hard rubbery plastic. That's good, it moves nice and smoothly, hmm, perfect. With quarter turning. Looks great because we don't need to turn it over and over, just a quarter. This is the infinity down to 0.45, perfect even turning it with one finger. So anytime you need to focus manually, just grab the ring. Then we have the external zoom ring from 24 up to 120 mm, which it is also covered with hard rubbery plastic. Hmm, great movement, nice and smoothly. Easy to rotate from 24 to 120 mm and vice versa. Oh man, you're gonna love it. Did you know that there's a small dot on the lens? Ah, oh, really? Well, this one looks doesn't have it, but what are they for? While zooming in and out, I noticed the zoom tube is not turning. It is totally fixed in a place. Look. This is my favorite ND filter. Let's load it in. This is the maximum dot of my ND filter, in a line with two small dots which they designed to be on the lens. To show that while zooming, the zoom tube is not turning. This is so great! 
because while zooming in and out to find the right angle and position, we don't need to keep changing our ND filters level. This is so fantastic and of course, a very useful one. So as we noticed, the focus ring is internal, but the zoom ring is external. Another thing about the lens is when we're holding the lens upside down, the zoom ring is not falling down from 24 to 120 mm or even vice versa, which it is really good. So let's see what do we have inside the lens. As I mentioned on the lens, this is an AFS lens. So we have the automatic focus lens with silent wave motor, which it should focus very fast, accurately and quietly. We will test it at the end of the video. Oh, end of the video? Yeah, end of the video. Why not test it right now? Oh, yes, you're right. Of course I'm right. Let's see the test result then. Now testing the focusing noise. Put it in autofocus. There we go. Now testing the focusing speed through the viewfinder. Now testing it in a live view mode. And as we notice, through the viewfinder is much faster than live view mode. There is a big N word on the lens, mean nano crystal coating. It is the lens's elements reflections to reduce ghosting and flares. ED means extra low dispersion glass. It's kind of glass in the lens for reducing the aberration for better picture quality. In this lens, we have two ED or extra low dispersion glass and three spherical element to correct the chromatic aberration. G gilded. It means that the lens doesn't have an aperture ring unlike the old lenses. Like this old 35 to 70 mm lens and this is the lens aperture ring. Then we have the aperture number. The maximum aperture of the lens is f4 and the minimum aperture is f22. After the aperture number, we have the lens's 24-120mm zoom range. So, let's go out of the studio for testing the zoom range. Testing the zoom range of the lens from 24-120mm on a tripod. Now we're in 24mm, 35, 50mm, 70, 85, and 120mm. Let's get back to the 24 millimeter. This is a portrait that I captured with this lens on Nikon D7200 with no LED lights or any diffusers, just using a natural light in front of the window. This is a perfect standard zoom lens and a professional kit lens. Yes, you're right, and a professional kit lens which is designed for full frame cameras. However, we can use it on crop sensor cameras too, but pay attention about the focal length, I mean the zoom range. If we use the lens on a fixed format or full frame cameras, we're going to have the same 24 to 120 mm zoom range. But if we use it on the X format or crop sensor cameras with 1.5 time crop factor, we're going to have about 36 to 180 mm zoom range. 
which it is a huge zoom range, isn't it? So, please tell me if you have the lens, which camera body do you prefer to use it? Full frame or crop sensor? Please tell me in the comments down below. On the side of the lens, we have three switch buttons. The first one is manually to manually and automatic switch button. If you want to disable autofocus, switch it to the M or manual button. Otherwise, set it to the M-A button. Now you can control it manually and automatically. The second one is VR or vibration reduction technology systems on and off switch button. As I mentioned, the VR on the lens. By the way, the VR system on this lens improved into the second generation for a better and very sharp images, even in different lighting condition, day or night. Oh, so dark in here. Please someone turn on the light. And the last switch button is active and normal. This button is related to vibration reduction technology. Just leave it at normal unless you are shooting from a moving vehicle or some unstable position. Lens hood. The HB53 lens hood. It is especially designed for this lens. It is made of plastic and very well designed. By the way, never leave the lens hood behind like in a studio or at home. It is a very useful thing. And I always using a lens hood and all my lenses have their own lens hood. Even the kit lenses, especially the old lens. Do you remember the old 35-70 mm lens? For this old lens, we should screw the hood in the lens. See? So, what is the benefit of the lens hood and why we should use it? Bravo, that's a good question. Ah, oh, thank you. The benefit of the lens hood is first, reducing the lens flare. Second, protecting your lens from any damages. And the third one, which it is very important, it make your lens to be mm, awesome. Look, and you're gonna enjoy it, especially when you're hand holding it. When you're done with photography or videography, just switch the lens hood, turn it over, then load it back. Now you have the lens hood and the lens both together. Easy to carry and easy to use. When you're attaching or changing your lens, try to do it with the lens fully zoomed out into the 24 mm. When the zoom range is in 120 mm, the rear lens element moves deeply into the lens, as you see. So now a lot of dust can easily get inside the lens, especially when you are in a windy and dusty conditions. So, keep in mind. This is a very useful wide angle to short telephoto zoom range lens. With high speed, image stabilization, close focusing, great sharpness, nice hand holding, and very high quality building. To be used for many types of photography, including street photography, nature, wedding, portraits, and travel photography. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe the channel to see more videos. And like always, have a great shooty day.